Hi everyone, welcome John here. In today's video we're going to be looking at two main things. Um, the first one is we're going to be writing ourselves another web scraper which is going to get uh, the price information of three separate products, add them together and then send us an email. And the, th the other thing that we're going to look at is how to use uh, functions to help us achieve that. Um, functions in Python is probably something that a lot of beginners don't really get into. Um, they're much more useful as you get along your journey and you write uh, bigger programs and whatnot, but they're definitely us useful to start learning about earlier uh, so you understand how to write them and how they work. So I'm going to be using three different functions for this script. One to get the price of the items, uh, another to combine the price, and a third one to send us an email. When we get through it, you'll see how they all sort of work together and how you call them, and, and I'll explain it as we go along. So the premise of this video, the premise of this is going to be talking about upgrading your PC. So we're going to be looking at the prices of a new CPU, motherboard, and RAM. Uh, this is the CPU that I've chosen here, and as you can see here, we've got. Um, I'm basically going to follow this part along. Although I won't be doing it from this page, we'll be doing it from the separate item URLs. So you could customize this script to however you want it to work. Okay, so the first thing I've done, as always, is look at the source to see where the price information is held. Um, we can see down here that if I hover over this, I've done the inspect element on Firefox, that there's a span, a span with a class of price, which has the information in. However, if you look at the hovered uh, over parts here, you can see it's actually in two bits. Um, we could do this, but that's a bit of a pain. Um, underneath, I've noticed it might be a bit too small for you to read, but there's actually another span with a, the, um, the full information here uh, under the item prop equals price um, element. So we're going to use that instead. So if I just copy that, we can see, I'll explain it to you here. So you can see here, there's the span item prop price and the value we want is in the content. We can actually access this, which is what we're going to do. So but the two libraries we're going to use, the main ones is requests and beautiful soup. So let's get those imported, import requests, and from BS4, import beautiful soup. Okay, great. So the first function we're going to write is one that goes and gets the price from a specific URL for that website that we've chosen. Okay, so to start your function, it's always DEF, which is short for define, and we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call it get price. And then we need to pass in our argument, which is going to be the URL. So what that does is that when we call this function, when we call get price, we give it a URL and then it does this, it executes the code underneath. So first thing we need to do is to do r is equal to requests dot get and then the URL. So that's going to be the same URL that we give it. It's going to go ahead and get the information of the web page. Then we need to put that into our soup variable. Soup is equal to beautiful soup r dot text and let's not forget to use the HTML parser otherwise we will get a warning when we run the script. Okay so that's going to go ahead and get the information from the URL that we give it and it's going to put the HTML into the soup variable. So what we need to do now is to find the span tag that I talked about earlier to extract the price from the content part. So if we have our, our price variable here we can say price is equal to soup dot find and we can use find for this one and it was span okay and then we need to look for the item prop now to do this because it's not actually a class like we would do in our other beautiful soup uh, program that we wrote earlier we can do it this way we can open up the brackets like this and we can do item prop which is where it was and then we can pass in the uh, price here and now that should give us that value. You can see what we've done here is we've looked in the span tag, which is here, and then we've gone for item prop price. We need to get the content value. Now to call this out, what we can do is we can just put content on the end here like that, and that should get us the content value. Okay, so to close off our function, we need to return something, because if we don't actually return anything, we're not gonna get anything back when we do this. So what we want to do is to do return the price like that. So what that's going to do is it's, we're going to give it our URL when we call our function. 
and we would call our function like this get price Ooh, as you can see it suggests it there and then pass in our url whatever that is like this blah 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 and then it's going to execute this little piece of code so you can start to see how functions are going to be really useful to us and how um, it helps not repeat yourself when you're writing longer programs and it also helps you stay neat and tidy so let's test that so if we do um, print out uh, get price and we give it our URL I've got one here that I just need to copy out there we go let's put that in there that is the URL that I took from the website for the CPU so if we run that we should get back our price of the CPU, which is 178.99. There we go, 178.99. Perfect. So we know that that function works. So I'm just going to delete that now. We don't need that right away. So the next function that we're going to write is to add the prices of all the three items together. So if we do the same thing again, and we can call this one add prices. Now we need to make sure that we're passing in three arguments to this. So I'm just going to call these P1, P2, and P3, like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to do total is equal to. Now it's quite important that we do this because because we know that the price is, is 178.99. We can't use an integer. We need to use float. So we're going to add we're going to add them all together by using the float values. So P1, and then we're going to do plus, and I'll just copy this float p2 and then plus float p3 just like that and then again we need to return something and I'm going to return the total just like that so what this one will do is that we when we call this function we'll give it three variables and it will add them the float value of them all together okay so let's stop there and then let's let's check that this actually works Okay, so what we've done is we've uh, given ourselves a variable with which should give us the value of the price for each of these items. As you can see, we've called our function get price and then our URL, which we decided we needed to put in here. So if I now run uh, and print these out, we can go print CPU, motherboard, and RAM, and hopefully that will give us the prices for each one of those. There we go, we've got 178, 99, 99, 98, and 74, 40. What we can actually do is we can print inside and we can go our add prices function. We can call that and that should give us the total value, which is 350 something. Add prices. All right. Didn't call my function right there, which is why we got the error. There we go, and that's the total value that we've got. So if we just halt and have a quick look at what we've done, uh, we've imported the libraries that we need. We've created two functions. The first one, we, which we call with get price and the URL, goes to the URL, gets the HTML, saves it in our variable. Then we find the span tag that we, we uh, decided that we found the price was in. Uh, we access that by span and then the item prop price, but we wanted the actual content part, which we've used here, and that's return the price. Our second function Adds the, two th adds the three together, so P1, P2, and P3. Uh, that's the total, which gives us, and we've used float because they are all floating point numbers, and that returns the total. So our CPU, motherboard, and RAM runs our functions with the URL, and then we add them together with this function that we created, giving us a total of 353.37. If we go back to the website, I think that was exactly what there was here. Although we haven't done it this way, as I explained earlier. Excellent. So now we've got that done. The last thing we want to do is perhaps we want to email this to ourselves. Now, there's two ways that we can do this. Um, the first way is just to put the uh, email and everything directly into our script, or we could have a separate file um, with our uh, email function and then import that into this one. Because it's quite small, I'm actually just going to add it all into one so it's all done nice and easy and it's easier to see and explain it that way as well. So I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it send mail like that. So we don't need to pass in anything to this because we all we want it to do is run through and send the email that we want. Um, so I, I'm going to be using a Gmail account for this. Um, 
it's nice and easy. You have to set up, set up a new Gmail and you can, excuse me, you can set it um, with the settings that are, I think it's called less secure settings or something and that lets you access it this way, which is, I've got a separate one to do the testing on for things like this, which I use to email myself when I run my own scripts like this. So uh, Google uh, Gmail and less secure settings and you'll find out how to access it and do it for you. So the server for Gmail is like this and we're going to define it and we're going to use smtp uh, lib and then uh, dot smtp like that and then we're going to pass in the smtp server for gmail which is smtp i can't type dot gmail dot com and if you look to the docs the pass the port sorry is 587 so before we do this we actually just need to import the smtp library otherwise we're not going to get anywhere which is smtp lib like that. So we've defined our server and now we need to open our connection to it. We're going to be using start tls as the encryption. So server.start tls and then we're going to log in. So the way to do this is server.login. Now you can use environmental variables to to hide your username and password from your scripts and you should definitely look into doing that if you're going to be hosting your scripts anywhere or put, posting them to your GitHub. If you're just gonna run them privately or you're testing or you're learning, it is okay to put your username and password directly into your script, but just be aware that it's there and don't leave it lying around. Um, I, will, I will cover environmental variables um, and how you can do it in another, in another future video. So for now, I'm just gonna put in, um, something like your Gmail. So it would be whatever it is at gmail.com. And then the password we want is whatever your password is here. And that will access and log into the server for us. So we want to create a subject for the email that we're going to send. So that's gonna call that subject. And we'll just say uh, your upgrade price today or something along those lines will do. And now we want to define the body of what we're going to send in the body of the email. Um, I'm going to use an F string for this so we can put in the total the total uh, price. So if we do, excuse me, <coughs> F and we do something like the total price to upgrade today is that space and then this which determines that we can put code into a string and we want to do uh, the total price. There we go. I can actually see because we deleted our uh, print statement down here, we don't actually have that defined. So let's just add that in now. Total price is equal to add prices, CPU, um, motherboard, RAM. There we go, now we've defined that. So it's this value, this value that we're gonna put in our send mail there. So that's good, there we go. Um, now we need to define the message, which is a, the combination of the subject uh, and the body. Again, an F string. Um, and we want to do subject uh, is equal to, oops, sorry. Subject like that. Um, and a, we can do a couple of new lines and what that'll do is it'll just go from the subject to the body and then we'll put the body in here like this except Oop. okay so what that is is we've defined what our subject is and what our body is and the total of the message is the subject and then the body like that okay so now we need to send it so server dot send mail uh, and then here you want to put in the email address that it's going to go from. So email from at gmail.com. The email address that it's going to go to. So email to at gmail.com like that or whatever that is. And then the message that we've the uh, the message we've put in up here. Then it's nice to have a little print statement so we know what's happened email sent or whatever you like 
and then server.quit. Okay, so I'll just quickly run through this again. So our function send mail, uh, the server is the Gmail server, which I talked about a minute ago, and the default port. Uh, this is our authentication method. Uh, the login, which is your Gmail account and your password. Again, it is okay to do this on your own local scripts, but don't get in the habit of it and don't upload this anywhere, and always anyone will be able to see your password. Um, we'll cover environmental, environmental variables later. Uh, the subject and the body, which is the total price. We'll just put our colon in there so it's a bit tidier. Uh, and the message, which is the to which is the subject and the body on some on the separate lines. Send mail, email from, email to, and the message, and then exit the server. Okay. So if we were to do this like that, and we call our function send mail. If I ran this now, it would not work because obviously I've got no. Uh, email credentials um, but if I put in my information here it would send the email and uh, get the prices and send us the total so there it is guys hopefully you found this useful in some way uh, if you've got any questions leave a comment and I'll get back to you or if you're not sure about something or if I've done anything that could have been done better please let me know as well we're all learning here uh, cheers guys see you later